The February 22nd issue of Jacket Inventions has a number of Taver papers in it. One of them has some of the new devices. So as we go along with this revolution that is currently evolving, we're going to talk about the good results of the new generation of Taver devices, and they are confirmed. And I am with the uh, gentleman who wrote the editorial that accompanies the paper. Alec Vahanian is the head of cardiology at Bichon Hospital in uh, Paris, France. And this one is talking particularly about a device called the Lotus valve, correct? Describe the valve. What is it? Well, this uh, device is part of the new devices. It has several particular advantages. It can be repositioned. It can be retrieved in case of uh, unsatisfactory positioning. It has also a special skirt, which is aiming at decreasing the paravalvular leaks. So there are plenty of theoretical, in, in point of fact, real advantages. What we didn't know was the uh, long-term or mid-term follow-up. So the, the paper by Meredith did show that the promising results observed after one month are still there after one year, which is promising. But what is one year? It's relatively short in comparison with uh, um, Edward's valve, for example, where we have uh, six, seven, eight years, and also the Medtronic core valve. But let's say it's quite promising because one of the issues when we consider lowering the threshold for implanting this valve is the complication rate. And among the complications, we have one which is particularly concerning for us, it is paravalvular leaks. So with these new valves, whatever it is, this one, or the direct flow, or even the new Sapiens 3, the Evolute, the rate of CV or even moderate AR is very low. So that's a real progress because probably of the repositioning facilities and the skirt. The price, the price to pay, it was your question, I guess. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, uh, is the somewhat higher incidence of pacemaker implantation. So that's the Achilles heel. Yeah, Achilles heel, yes. I think it's not in a very elderly patient, but it could be a concern if we move toward younger patients. Right and also if we consider patients with poor LV function. So these two categories could be concerning. Obviously for a valve that advertises itself as repositionable, mm. how often does that happen? Is it something that's really important? Well, the point is, if you have the capacity, you will use it. In True. point of fact, as far as I remember from this uh, paper, it was used in a quarter of patients, which is wow. not neglectable. No, not at all. Yeah. Why would you want to? Just to, you, you think you didn't get quite the seal you wanted? Yeah, if you see AR, you may want to, to, to reposition the device if the sizing was correct. Because I think the decrease in the degree of AR is due to two major facts better sizing and also the repositioning uh, capacity and some skirts. But sizing is also crucial and now everybody moved to CT, for, uh, ev almost everybody moved to CT, which is a very, very important progress forward. I mean, when you get established in the first generation devices and you move to the second generation, you always go, is it going to be as good? In your opinion, are you optimistic? Yes, I, I do, uh, I'm optimistic. But, as you said, the Achilles ill is the pacemaker. So, let's say we should be ready to accept this slight increase in pacemaker rate. To me, it's not a problem in elderly patients. Could be a concern if we want to move to real young patient, but it's not today, not even tomorrow. Now, this is from the, the February 22nd issue of Jack Interventions. There are a number of papers. This is just one of the ones we're talking about, the taking a look at some of the new TAVR technology. Please go look at Jack Interventions for Cardiosaurus World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.